good evening everyone i hope you are able to hear me and you are able to watch my screen yes sir yes, now sir. we are entering into our mock interviews uh, session let's uh, we will start with uh, abdullah can you go ahead with the uh, process of enterprise structure yes sir what is enterprise structure uh, <clears throat> enterprise structure uh, mm, yeah. <clears throat> yes uh, well enterprise structure is a, a combination of a structure of an organization uh, which will be configured uh, in a process like uh, first we will uh, define an enterprise name then after we will define a divisions of course the division divisions are optional uh, then after we will uh, define legal entities then the legal entity has to be assigned with the legislative data group and then we will create uh, ledgers into that and then after the business unit has to be created and the reference data set uh, the workforce structures the workforce structures will be assigned to business unit uh, through rds except uh, positions okay what are the different uh, set idea objects we have in hcm uh, uh, set idea objects are uh, Uh, job grade uh, location and departments why this location is having sorry why this position is having reference data set and uh, that is not required for the job basically uh, when uh, comes to i'm sorry uh, the question is wrong whenever we are working with the job we will be working with the reference data set and then assign to business unit but when we are working with the positions directly we will assign with the business unit why like that uh, because why uh, the position is not in the set id object uh, because the positions are optional in each and uh, every organization departments are mandatory uh, i mean jobs are mandatory when it comes to the positions there might be a difference that it may be required in uh, few organization it may not re not required in another uh, in a, uh, in another organizations in that scenario uh, not like that it's very simple jobs are common for all the business units that's why most of the clients they will define the common jobs in all the business units that's why we will assign this job to the reference data set assign this reference data set to the business unit if you do not have reference data set concept what we have to do let's say 40 business units we have every time we have to assign to the business unit that's it. but positions are different from one business unit to another business unit okay positions are different from one business unit to another business unit that's why we are going to create the positions individually for every business unit bu1 these are the positions bu2 these are the positions client will provide those uh, list and that we are going to configure according to our requirement that's a simple answer so jobs are common for most of the business units that's why we will use reference data set but positions are different from one bu to another bu that's why we are going to create the positions and assign to business unit directly that's the answer is clear everyone yes sir yes yes sir yes uh, uh, what are the different types of uh, positions we have geeta uh, none pooled uh, single incumbent and shared okay what is mean by single incumbent mm. what is the meaning of single incumbent sir uh, single incumbent where we can hire uh, only a single person so for example a single incumbent you are defined and you already hired an employee and you terminated that employee will you will that allow again hiring one more employee no sir because this is single incumbent right where we can hire only one employee so we use single incumbent but already we have terminated that employee you left the company 
Okay. He left the company already. So will that allow? No, sir. Why? Why it won't allow? Because that employee is not active, right? Is inactive, right? Terminated means uh, inactive status. Uh, but uh, but we give single ligament in that uh, employee details, no, sir. Okay. Again, so what is have... the what is the use of that uh, single ligament? See, what is the meaning of single ligament? At a time, we can have only one active employee. Okay. Right. The employee is already terminated. He is in active status. And you are hiring, obviously you are supposed to hire one more employee, right? It's a very common. If we, if one employee left from that particular position, we'll try to hire another employee, right? Yes, yes, sir. So uh, in that scenario, obviously we will go with this, right? Yes, sir. So if we look at this uh, position, hmm. yeah, and incumbent. You will come to know multiple. I think it has been changed from single incumbent to old. It will allow five members. Okay. So, in case of that, uh, you can verify it. You can go for verify. Yes, incumbent. Let me search any other position, chief investigator. There are three members here. Yeah, current FT. This is a single incumbent. Okay. So current FT is one. This employee is already there. So if you go for terminate this employee, then it will allow you to for take another employee. Okay. So next question. What is FT? That uh Full time equivalent. So, in which uh, position type it will be mainly used? Mainly, it will be used in which position type? Single incumbent only. No, when we are, so we can use that no, also, but mainly it is pulled, used sir, for. Where there is a limit on the headcount, no? So, that's why we use. Whenever we select the position type as uh, shared, okay. when you are sharing the position, for example, four members are going to share your uh, position, then what will be the FTE for everybody is equal to 0 0.25? That will be the FTE, full-time equivalent. That will be the FTE, uh, full-time equivalent. That. Okay. Yes, uh, Lakshmi, can you go ahead with uh, explanation of the position synchronization? Position synchronization is when we <coughs> allow the position, allow uh, positions to get attributes. Uh, 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 shared attributes, I would say. Um, one second, so I'm not to uh, one minute. Um, it will uh, help in uh, where. Uh, where assignments are uh, inheriting the attributes from the uh, position. For example, if you give uh, authorization, we enable position synchronization at a legal entity or at an enterprise level, uh, it will help in the syncing uh, of all the attributes that are associated with a particular position. Like what, are the, what are the different levels we will go for configure position synchronization? Uh, we can uh, enable it at uh, enterprise level and at uh, legal entity level in the setup and maintenance area. Enterprise legal entity level, two levels. Yes. What is okay. the highest priority? Uh, if it a uh, legal entity, if it is uh, defined at both the levels, then the precedence is for the legal entity. Priority is given for the legal entity. Okay. If at all we would like to go for uh, make changes in the attributes. Uh, what we have to do generally when we are hiring an employee the moment when we choose the position corresponding attributes will be populated, populated. in the read only mode i just okay. wanted to update that particular information how we can do that 
to go back to the particular position and edit it? I'm not sure. It means we need the permission for the assignment or edit. Yes. I'm not sure of the answer, sir. So in, in the position synchronization option, whenever we set this uh, position synchronization, mm -hmm. we have have option to choose. Let's open the task here. Here I can find moment here. Allow override at assignment level. If this checkbox is enabled, it will allow us to override as assignment okay. level. So whenever we are doing that, we can go for override that particular uh, values. Yes, uh, Shamim, what is the difference between transfer and global transfer? Transfer and global transfer. Transfer means uh, it is within the same legal entity, but different bus uh, business users. That is normal general transfer. And global transfer is uh, enterprise is uh, same, but uh, legal entity and uh, um, legal entity is different. Okay. So within the B also, you can go for transfer. For example, one department to another department. Yes. So transfer is simple within the legal employer. Don't use the word called legal entity. Okay. When you use the word legal entity, there is no question of employees in legal entity, right? Employees okay. will be there only in legal employer. That's why when you are hiring an employee, the system will ask you legal employer. It will not ask you legal entity. Okay. okay so simple answer when transfer is nothing but transfer a worker within the legal employer from one BU to another BU or one manager to another manager, one department to another department or one location to another location. If you do it across the legal employers, then it's going to be a global transfer. Yes, sir. Whenever we do global transfer, what will happen? Uh, global transfer, uh, we need to transfer the template first. Uh, we need to transfer the template oh, my from... Question uh, is, my question is, when you do the global transfer, what will happen? person will go to the another legal employer. No. So whenever we do the global transfer, first employee will be terminated in the okay. current legal employer. First, he will be terminated here. Then it will be hired in the new legal employer. Then it will be hired in the new legal employer. Okay. okay. So that's the, that's the, it's very important. They lost in the interviews uh, it will be terminated in the current work relationship will be terminated and the new work relationship will be created in the new legal employer and also assignment will be created it means it's a hiring process over there it's terminated here okay the person number will be changed in that scenario uh, if it is system generated uh, it will not change if it is automate i mean if it is manual it can be changed that person number. Is it? Is person number will be different? For employees, is the person number will be different? Person number will be different in automatic. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is no change in person number. Mm hmm Person number will not be changed, right? It is fixed. Yes. If there is any worker number, it will be different. Yes, sir. If the worker number is configured at legal entity level, legal employer level, then it's going to be, okay. uh, it may be changed over there. Okay. Yes, sir. Fine. So then uh, what is the difference between person number and uh, worker number? Vaishnavi? Difference between person number and worker number. Sir, like person number is mandatory and worker number is like optional. Like uh, no, person. I'm asking the definition. 
Okay. Exactly. What is the major difference? Because as a functional consultant, we cannot tell those differences. Somebody technical guys may can explore, but as a functional consultant, we have to say that person number will be generated at enterprise level. Uh, at number... enterprise level and worker number is generated at legal employer level. Okay. What are the different types of uh, person number generation methods we have? Automatic uh, prior to submission and automatic uh, upon final save. Manual. Manual. Yeah, there are three options. So uh, what is the difference between automatic uh, final save and uh, prior to submission? Like automatic prior to submission means like uh, so, so first automatic upon final save means after completion of the process, then number will be generated and there will be uh, no gaps between the number. But when it comes to automatic prior to submission, there might be a chances of gap uh, between the person number as it goes for the approval. Okay. So where do we configure the person duplicate check? For example, we are going to hire an employee. We are going to enter the employee details. Next to employee, we are going to hire. Maybe we are trying to enter the same information. So what are the fields system is supposed to consider? Okay, when these three fields enter same, then we have to consider it as a or duplicate M worker. So where do we configure this? What is I didn't remember. Same in manage enterprise uh, information. Manage enterprise. It's a CM information. Mm -hmm. Here we can see that person yes. creation duplicate check. Yes, and we are supposed to choose the fields. What are the fields the system is supposed to cross check before mm -hmm. verifying the before uh, take a decision whether it's a duplicate or not? Yes. National ID, it depends on the requirement. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, uh, Faizia. What are the different types of uh, accrual plans we have? What are the different types of options plans we have here? Accrual plans, sir. Accurals, uh, application, con um, compensatory, accrual. Agreement, compensatory, donation, no entitlement, and qualification. So what are different types of options plans we have? One is accrual, qualification, no entitlement. Agreement, compensatory, and donation. So what is no entitlement? Sir, so no entitlement is where we can create an absence plan uh, to track the unpaid absences without maintaining an accrual balances or providing the leave entitlement such as periodic accruals. What are what are the different types of uh, accrual uh, methods we have? Accrual methods. We yes. have three types of accrual methods. Mm. We have two things. What is front loaded and uh, front loaded and uh, implement? What is the difference between these two? Sir, what can I ask? Ask the what, question. What is the difference between these two? Front loaded and incremental. Yes. Uh, sir, when we provide uh, uh, our accrual type, uh, accrual method as front loaded, um, it will. 
we did multiple times right mm -hmm. multiple times we have created and we have done that so what is the front loaded sir if you provide the uh, accurate pants as a front loaded then total leaves will be showed in the beginning itself sir all the leaves will be all the acryls will be allocated in the starting of the period. starting of the when we give the increment the acryl uh, the leaves will be generated per every month every period the leaves yes. will be uh -huh. okay so this this definitions you have to note it down uh, yes. because uh, it's very difficult for that uh, when you go for the interview point of view if we said in the single line when you are we we already done enough exercises in options management with fast formulas and mm -hmm. we did multiple times testing also we have done uh, mm -hmm. but only thing why we are not able to do the definition of more lengthy more lengthy it's not like a single line right as we are functional consultant they will expect more uh, you no know, exploration okay when we speak more and uh, other we are good at in communication i think in our hcm batch almost all are good communicators Uh, so yes. only the thing is the answer needs to be expanded by explaining the full definition full length of definition okay sir yes uh, think, i think i think yeah what is the difference between vesting period and waiting period uh basic difference between vesting period and waiting period is waiting period is that uh, leaves are not uh, enrolled for the employee and in vesting period leaves are enrolled but uh, he have to uh, like he has to wait for some time for for the enrollment for example if the wasting period of an employee is the 30 days then uh, he, after 30 days he would be enrolled for a absence plan but uh, in waiting period if an employee is a uh, waiting period is of 30 days then uh, after 30 days he would be uh, after 30 days he would be he can apply for the leaves okay so i just wanted to go for create an options type without options plan can we do that uh, no sir we cannot do that we can create we can create an options type without options plan also okay so we okay. can go for create there are some scenarios where we will be able to create we'll talk about that also in our assignments session okay. mm -hmm. yes what are the different types of offset uh, dates we have in payroll definitions mm -hmm. submission plan the pay slip availability dates uh, details uh, submission submission details pre planned pre planned details no uh, what i'm talking is uh, offset details earn date submission date planned submission date pay slip availability date and mm -hmm. we have total six different types of dates right yes sir yes last submission date cut off date what is cut off cut date off. what is cut off uh, date cut, cut off date is that after the after the date after the given date uh, uh, any of the cutoffs would not be updated uh, it would be reflect in the next payroll no no you are telling the example but they will expect exact definition cutoff date is nothing but a date where the payroll related information is not allowed after that particular date okay. cutoff date is nothing but a last date for entering the payroll, payroll information yes okay. that's that's what what is difference between recurring element and non recurring element uh, recurring element is that uh, the element which uh, which repeats uh, uh, every month uh, every period or in, uh, for that case in, uh, every month and uh, non recurring is that it appears just for uh, uh, just for uh, an year or a period so can you tell me some examples for recurring period and non recurring period okay sir uh, sir basic pay or the salary can uh, is a recurring element and uh, bonus is a non recurring element okay so how will you attach this non recurring elements to the employees 
because it will not be added every period automatically, right? We have yes. to externally add this. How will you do that? Uh, sir, I would create a new. Uh, I would create a new element called bonus in supplemental earnings, and I will attach That's it to right. the employee. Element, element is created, but how will you attach this element for the employees? Uh, sir, there is an option in the uh, uh, option in payroll setup. Um, just give me. Hmm? What is the navigation to attach the element for an employee? Uh, so you can go to my client groups uh, in that search form the employee. Uh, go to the task bar uh, where you have go, where you get the details of payroll details. Uh, there are element entries. You can click on that and add your element accordingly. For example, I have 5,000 employees. For each employee, different bonus is there. Then how we can update at a time? Can we go with like this? No, sir. We can go through HCM data loader. Okay. You want to update that information through HCM data loader, is it? Yes, sir. Okay. So, for example, you have assigned the payroll to the employee. After attaching the payroll to the employee, then salary basis system is going to ask, is it mandatory? Uh, sir, can you repeat the question? Salary basis is mandatory for an employee. Salary basis. Yes, sir. Actually, salary basis is uh, uh, if you are attaching salary base. Yes, sir. It is uh, it is necessary. Okay. Because while creating the basic salary, uh, standard earnings, uh, uh, it will not show anything in the uh, uh, employee's pay slip. What salary he, uh, he is uh, dis uh, discarding from the employer? What is what is basic sal? What is salary basis? What is the definition of salary basis? Uh, base, uh, the definition of salary basis is what you what the uh, what the legal employer pays to the employee can be defined as salary basis. The salary basis is nothing but a basic salary which we are offering to an employee. Okay. Is it like so? Whenever we attach the salary basis and when we search, we are getting the taxation element automatically, right? Yes, sir. Where do we configure this taxation elements? When which task? In which task will configure this taxes and elements? No, sir, sir. Can anybody tell? Sir, in consolidation group where we define the legislative, US Wrong legislative. Answer. Wrong answer. Next. Man is legal reporting unit HCM information. Man is legal reporting unit HCM information, is it? That's yes, the sir. Task name. That's, the, that's the task name. So what we have to enable there? We have to enable one checkbox. What is that? Your tax, tax, reporting tax, reporting tax reporting unit. Tax reporting yes. unit. Yes. Okay. So the tax reporting unit is mandatory where we are going to configure the statutory tax system details. According to that, system is going to... <coughs> What is meant by payroll flow? Azinka, what is meant by payroll flow? Yes, sir. Uh, payroll flow is uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, if we go for the US uh, US simplified payroll cycle, then uh, if you select US simplified payroll cycle, then it comes with uh, 20 different types of uh, steps, which uh, are some of them are manual, which are some of them are reports and some of them are standard processes. We go through the 20 processes, which is called payroll flow. And at the final... But not like that. See, the question is simple. What is payroll flow? Payroll flow is nothing but group of payroll processes or payroll reports, which we will run whenever we are running the payroll. That's okay. the basic definition of payroll flow. Then if they ask us, tell me what is the US uh, simplified payroll flow, then we have to say US simplified payroll flow is one of the built-in payroll flow provided by Oracle, which is having around 18 to 20 processes and reports. Whenever we are running the payroll, we are going to run all these reports and processes in the sequence order to collect the 
payroll information and to calculate the payroll information and uh, to generate the payments and also the pay slips and to calculate the accounting entries and transfer to general ledger. That's so when we take up the question uh, from your point of view, definitions are missing. You know the concept because we have already done the assignments number of and we have done practically right. The only thing what we are uh, what you are missing is the definition. When you want to perfect in the definitions point of view, first whatever the FAQs I have specified in our mobile app, let's mm -hmm. for every question go through the documentation uh, or if you know already answer, prepare one Excel sheet. When there is an interview tomorrow or day after tomorrow, then you will be able to go through, right? Uh, yes. If there are 100 questions also within 30 minutes, you will be able to understand and you will be able to go through that. Okay. So if you do not prepare the definitions, then it's difficult to explain in the interview exactly. So let's go that way. So that will make us more uh, uh, flexible. Okay. Sir, uh, I'm so, unable can... to 